This is Teresa Avila, a Doctor of Art History, Assistant Professor at Cal State University Channel Islands in conversation with Dr. Raquel Baker, Assistant Professor of English at Cal State University Channel Islands. And we are here together to uh, discuss briefly uh, the topic of digital humanities uh, and from our different perspectives and also experiences most recently in a um, digital humanities workshop. Uh, I will begin um, by explaining digital humanities as I have come to experience it uh, and can begin with a reference such as this. In a very basic form, digital humanities, at least in the arts, um, but also more broadly in academia, has um, meant digitization of material. Um, and then the question of where to house materials um, in terms of databases. And so we often have then the development of web-based archives. Um, so that's some of the earlier forms of digital humanities that I have become familiar with or aware of and even utilized myself. Um, but more recently, I have been engaged in um, being an active agent um, with digital humanities, trying to develop it within my field of art history, wanting to activate and create more interactive um, activities, assignments, scholarship experiences um, for broad ranging audiences in relation to the arts. And so I've been seeking ways to interact with the arts um, in different platforms, which lends itself to different forms of digital humanities. Uh, and so I think of web based applications or apps um, and have started to look into what it would mean to develop such a thing um, and have kind of hit a wall because suddenly I realized that um, that more technologically based digital humanities involves some skills that I lack. Um, but my goals for digital humanities, which I continue to pursue, um, are to take the skills that I have and bridge them with others that have the skills that I lack um, as we continue to potentially define digital humanities. Uh, Raquel, what's been your experience? I'm sorry, you're muted. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, there you go. That should tell you all you need to know about <laughs> my technological experience. Uh, but I was just saying it, it was so lovely to hear you talk about that because I have a very similar story. So I think that's one really nice piece of this fellowship is to get other people's um, experiences and to be able to put that into perspective. Um, so yeah, um, I did my graduate work at a research one, so I have very much the same kind of experience where uh, the digital humanities um, went through all of the different steps that uh, we're sharing on the slide. The digitization piece was a big part of what our library was doing and library faculty, um, you know, ha had lots of grants to do that and were really um, expanding. Um, uh, special collections, for example, things that maybe really couldn't physically be touched and really uh, increasing access and enriching the archive, right, through digitization, which I can't say right now. <laughs> um, Web-based archives, um, absolutely. Um, platforms and applications, very much so. And even the way that you've got it, I feel like is a way that it moved in terms of um, what I saw my institution doing and getting into um, through different waves of uh, this developing field. Um, I got in there uh, right after the platform applications piece um, as an educator, I really um, have very few uh, technology skills, right? Like not even able to unmute myself type of thing. So um, I was really lucky to get involved in the digital humanities through a project um, of one of the um, professors at the University of Iowa where I was at, uh, who is still a great mentor and I'm still in contact with. And he um, was part of a team of folks who built an application, right? So lots of computer technology skills, right? Um, uh, they built this application that um, was a GPS, I, I won't even be able to explain it well, but like it's on, on a telephone uh, and an app, right? Um, and because it was at the University of Iowa, Iowa City is this 
incredible um, author city. It's where the Iowa Writers Workshop is. It's a very famous writing program. So just ridiculous amounts of famous writers have been there. Um, and so um, like, for example, Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Flannery O'Connor. So they created this app where they went around and would say where like all these writers have been. So, you know, if you're standing on this street corner, you might, the app might say, you know, Kurt Vonnegut puked over there one night after drinking too much or, you know, something like that. So it was this app that was uh, GPS based and, was, and we were populating it um, with all this information, archival information we can find about authors and then, you know, even less famous authors because Iowa City, big art city because of the writers program. Um, so even just every, you know, all the authors we could find, we were populating that information. It was becoming a big project. I was a grad student teaching general education English. And so we were getting a lot of those classes to take on the project and students in those classes were building that archive for that app, right? Of all of getting author interviews, getting biographies, writing up all this stuff. So it was very much an interactive educational tool as I entered it and as I was able to enter it as a humanities person, but certainly it had like all, all this rich app building knowledge there at the university that I was at, right? And I was able to get in just as a humanities person. Um, so uh, that's how I got introduced into the digital humanities and started to get a passion for it. But much like you, I feel like I don't um, have the technology skills to really be an innovator in that field. So I'm just trying to find my space in that field. Being at a research one university allowed me to just be a humanities person and, and a very much be part of a team, right, that, that was uh, contributing. Um, and so I'm definitely looking for how I can, where I can fit in now. I don't imagine I'm gonna build great technology skills, you know, but I do believe I will continue to grow as a, as a scholar of humanities. And that's wonderful. And that actually um, lends itself to the final point that I'd like to make, which is something you touched on in terms of being one of a team. And uh, what I've come to realize is digital humanities projects require interdisciplinary uh, and, and many, many hands on board uh, and resources um, and skill sharing and building. Uh, so it, it, it's a multi phase effort uh, and certainly interdisciplinary and also then um, you know requires some time and networking but I, I believe fruitful and, and and unfortunately what I've noticed when we talk about digital humanities outside of, of the humanities as a field of study is that you find a lot of the STEM fields developing what they're calling digital humanity projects but without the humanities component so then you have scientists trying to teach themselves and their robot how to draw instead of working with an artist who could show them how to program it to draw and then some and maybe even do more right or you have people playing music to statistics without understanding the musicology the history of music and classical music or instrument and the classism within that and so um, I am a huge advocate for the humanities being brought into um, the STEM development side of digital humanities because I believe that there's a parallel that's happening or at least what I've been able to see at institutions that I've been at which include Arizona State University and now uh, Channel Islands. Um, and you know, I've, as I've been looking further at the NEH grants and, and things of that sort in terms of how to take our projects further, um, I think that is the next step, is building a network of inclusivity, of diversity, and interdisciplinarity. Any final words, Raquel? No, I think that does it. Uh, it's been such a rich conversation to hear um, your experience and uh, where, where we see ourselves going in this field. Thank you.